Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. Sorry I got this uh, Q&A episode a little bit uh, later than usual. Things got a little, out of, a little bit uh, conflicted, uh, you should say. But uh, I'm going to do it this week, and also the Q the special episode on Dakota Raptor would actually uh, be uploaded a little bit after, a little bit pretty much before this video. But uh, uh, we get get my drift, and so. So a Q&A episode, so let's actually get down to business, shall we? Benjamin from Hong Kong, is Electrosaurus as robust as Albertosaurus? Well, Electrosaurus uh, appears before uh, Albertosaurus, about close to 10 million years, uh, 10 to 15 million years, and uh, they're both on different uh, continents, uh, in, in where the fossils have been found. And so, Electrosaurus is not going to be as robust as Albertosaurus, because as Electrosaurus is smaller, and it is going to be a little bit more slender uh, than Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus would actually have a little bit more muscle mass uh, than Electrosaurus. But even though Albertosaurus would actually be one of the faster uh, train large Tyrannosaurs, but it would actually still actually be a little bit tad bit more robust. I wouldn't call Albertosaurus robust. I would actually just call both animals slender. It's just that one's going to be bigger than the other. And so that's pretty much how that goes. Is the clawed theropod in a in, that appeared in Chased by Dinosaurs, Stars of the Source, or Dinocarnus? There is an Asaurus. And that's your answer for right there. Brendan from Morris, New York. Uh, my question is about the Megdosaurus. Why it, why it looks so small and could it get bigger? Uh, where Nemectosaurus is actually found, found in Mongolia and basically in the Gobi Desert. And in uh, Nemectosaurus can go close to 60 feet. And so that's pretty much nearly the same si same length as Camarasaurus. And, uh, but uh, both of them are in different periods and different continents. And so Nemectosaurus is in the Cretaceous, whereas uh, Camarasaurus is in the Jurassic. And so the, the reason why uh, Nemectosaurus is probably a little bit smaller is due to the environment it's living in. And so during that time, uh, around set, like 80 to 75 million years, uh, is where you actually see that the environment would actually be a little bit drier and not as much vegetation would be available for Nemectosaurus. And so that's why uh, Nemectosaurus can't get too big or otherwise it would starve to death. And so, where it lived was probably in a semi-arid environment, and so that's probably the reason why uh, we don't find any bigger Nemectosaurus. But could it get bigger? Absolutely. There's possibly a way for uh, Nemectosaurus to possibly get a little bigger. If there was more vegetation around, uh, it could possibly get a little bit bigger. But probably due to the environment, it could not get any bigger. And so, Nemectosaurus would actually be one of the larger dino would be one of the hev heaviest dinosaurs. Uh, in its time, in, in its environment, but probably not going to get any bigger than 60 feet. And your next question, where would you, where do you like excavating dinosaur bones or prehistoric animals in North America or around the world? Do you want to study dinosaurs or prehistoric animals in North America or around the world? Well, I haven't done too much fossil hunting in terms of vertebrates, but the only time I did, it was pretty much in South Dakota, um, but it, it's very limited uh, around there. And so you have to know where you're going. And also you got to make sure that the land that you're going into is pretty much available to the public, but don't try to actually invade anybody's property. And so that's pretty much how you're going to have to know that where you're going is going to be safe for you to actually uh, find fossils but uh, I've only mostly have I have found invertebrate uh, animals and so in terms of where I like to like look for fossils I mean I live here in Wisconsin and so um, Wisconsin is not very well known for vertebrate fossils it's mostly known for invertebrate fossils so uh, Ordovician and Silurian and a little bit of Devonian, uh, even some Cambrian fossils, but those Cambrian fossils are pretty much uh, stromatolites, and so that, that's not very uh, 
satisfying. But uh, but in terms of invertebrate, invertebrate fossils uh, in Wisconsin, um, brachiopods are very common. Uh, some uh, crinoids are very common here as well. Trilobites, trilobites are actually here in Wisconsin. Uh, those are actually kind of not too bad to find, mainly in the eastern part of Wisconsin, not in the western part of Wisconsin. Western part of Wisconsin, they're very rare. Uh, but uh, but some of the coral that is actually found in like some of the Niagara limestone. Oh my gosh, that is just spectacular. I got to see um, um, a chunk. Like a huge chunk, probably like a 50-pound chunk, of uh, of a coral that a friend of mine actually found in uh, Washington Island and Door County in Wisconsin. And oh my gosh, that was spectacular! You can see the little spots where the coral would actually um, kind of resp do have its respiration and getting all the water in and out of its system and all that sort of stuff. Holy, holy moly, that is huge! Uh, it was probably a little, little bit over two feet across, so it was, or actually, I should say it's actually a foot and a half across. Uh, it's a foot and a half across, but it, it was big, and it, it's massive, and so it's pretty amazing about that, and so, but uh, in terms of where I would like to find some uh, vertebrate fossils, um, I would actually love to go back to South Dakota and actually search for some vertebrate fossils possibly just like in the in the pure shale uh, areas where I can find um, possibly like shark teeth or anything about fish you know that sorts of stuff but also I mean you know who knows maybe there is a possibility I could actually find some dinosaurs but uh, but uh, I would have to pay a lot of money to actually go find some dinosaurs and so don't have the money right now but uh, but I would probably just stay in North America in my book because I'm not ready to go around the world yet. All right, that's it for now. No, no, I'll get to the. I'm gonna get the uh, episode about Dakota Raptor all finished, and and I'm pretty much gonna make sure to upload this video um, uh, pretty soon. So if you get so Dakota Raptor will be ready ready to go um, already, and so you guys can check out that video. Um, before you check out this video or otherwise after this video because this video was supposed to be posted last week but uh, what can you do when you have so many things going on in one week I mean, yeah but uh, anyway the next but next week will be a new Q&A episode so if you got any uh, questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or just go on my Facebook page prehistoric facts of Dino Chris like the page you get you post your questions on the wall or in the Facebook or in the, or in the comments section. But remember, keep your questions short and to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff, cool stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you. And also, for younger people out there, to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you could have a good education. It's very important to have good educations with a good education. You get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. That's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.